Yo, how's everybody doing? Welcome back to my channel or podcast. Depends on if you're listening right now or you're watching through YouTube. In this video or podcast, I want to talk about something that means a lot to me. Today marks the one year anniversary of the Lekki massacre in my home country of Nigeria. And that's what I'm going to be addressing in this video slash podcast. Um, so if you're not interested, you could go check out my other podcasts, go check out my other videos. And um, yeah, because I really want to mostly, I think this is mostly directed to Nigerians and people who really feel for the nation and who are really passionate about things like this. So if you didn't know, NSARS was a movement that originated in Nigeria to combat police violence against the youth. This special anti-robbery squad would abuse and exploit people who they deemed fosters and even in some cases mercilessly kill them. This, amongst other things like bad governance and a lack of opportunities, frustrated the population and they began to protest in Nigeria and even outside the country because of Nigerians abroad, Nigerians in the diaspora. Youth called for a better police force and a change to the way Nigeria is governed because quite frankly, Nigeria is a shitty country. Fast forward to October 20th of last year, the government felt threatened by the large convocation that this movement created through social media, international coverage, and protesters, protesters in the ground in Nigeria. So they decided as an inept government would to shoot and kill Nigerians that were peacefully protesting in a lucky lucky toll gate in Lagos. And as a Nigerian that has lived in Europe for most of my life, I would admit that I am detached to the realities that terrorize everyday Nigerians. I have never been mistreated by this group. I don't suffer from a lack of opportunities. I don't have to look over my back every single time I step outside the house because I'm afraid that a, a SARS police officer is going to kill me. I have basic needs like food, water, and electricity, and that's why I consider myself to be so, so lucky that I had a chance to leave Nigeria when I was eight years old. However, I consider, my con- I consider Nigeria my home and my country that I love so dearly much, and that's why I have this flag right behind me, and I have a necklace that reminds me where I'm from. It's an Afri- a necklace of an Af- uh, the African continents. Uh, and that's why this NSRS movement affected me, because I could have been Jimo Isaac, I could have been Nicoletti Johnson, a precious Odua because not everybody gets to jump out from the country and be born into a wealthy influential family. Unfortunately, some of us have been on the receiving end of the injustices that occur every day in Nigeria, and those names I just mentioned were on the receiving end. May the souls rest in peace and may the deaths not be in vain. We cannot let all these people we cannot let all these people's deaths be in vain. We cannot let the deaths of the, those who died from malnourishment, from bad governance, from ineffective healthcare, from tribal conflict, we cannot let the deaths be in vain. We must pick the death sacrifices instead of needless bloodshed. We must continue to fight for a better Nigeria, a better Africa, a better world for a number of unrelated reasons, but these people have to be a part of them. When I see Renu or Aisha Yusuf use our platforms to speak out, women in Nigeria that has been, a, I believe, a largely patriarchal society, when I see northern and southern youth protesting side by side, living at differences, living whether they're Muslim or Christian at home, Come out, come outside to protest. And this one issue, it gives me hope because for too long in Nigeria we have been, and even Africa too, we have been our own greatest enemies. A lot of people say white people or colonization, but I believe to this day our greatest enemies share our skin color. Never forget that at the end of the day, that it was Africans that sold other Africans to slavery in return for guns to terrorize other Africans. Nigeria can and will be a better country because of our actions today. Sometimes I feel helpless because who the fuck am I? I don't have any power, no fame, no money, but I still try to do what I can to help Nigeria progress for everybody, including me, because I would have rather be born in Nigeria and stayed in Nigeria and be happy with my country instead of going to another man's land. Because quite frankly, if you go to another country, you're basically a second class citizen there. Um, retweeting, running for political office, and use, using whatever resources you have, small or big, will be useful in the fight to rid bad governments and make our children and grandchildren and other upcoming Nigerians grateful and appreciate our efforts. Everybody should have an answer when the child asks them what it did during these trying times. We must make Nigeria better for those that cannot leave, for those that love our country, for those that consider it their home. For those that feel out of place abroad, for those that want to break out of the righteousness of the country to other foreigners, we must make the country better for all Nigerians. This fight will seem unworthy, long and boring because changes take time, but at, at the end of the day, the fight will be worth it. When upcoming generations complain about the consumption of meat or how there isn't enough diversity at the schools or how they forgot to turn the light off for the past day or two, and basically complain about travel problems that we wish we had today. So what can we do? I believe we could hope. Hope is the reasons why we do many things despite not knowing the end result. 
we must hope for a better Nigeria and I truly believe that there could be a better Nigeria. Without this, we can act intentionally and keep the fight going. It's basically like going to the gym and not believing that you get a better body or if you're studying and you don't hope or believe that you are going to get a better grade. The fact that we hope that we get a better grade, it makes us study. It motivates, motivates us to do the things that normally we wouldn't do. And in this case, in Nigeria, the youth have to hope because at the end of the day, I believe 50% of the country, 50, I think it's like 21 and younger. So at the end of the day, the, these boomers that are in power right now, they're going to die off. And won't we be the ones in charge in the political seats? Won't we be the ones that are going to be police officers? And if you look at the grand scheme of things, time is on our side. I hope knowing this can help us increase hope for a better future for all Nigerians. I believe you could use our voices. I'm using the little voice that I have to speak against the current government and support those who want change. Social media has changed again because one person that sees this can spread a message to another person through word of mouth, which creates a domino effect because that person could tell someone else and that person could tell someone else and it just keeps on going. So I don't think you should get discouraged with your voice no matter how small it is. You could repost, retweet, make videos, do some podcasts, use the internet to your advantage to let the world know what you have to say about the injustices that you feel really strongly about. And when it garners attention, change becomes more likely to happen because there are more eyes and ears that are behind you. And the more problem or the more relevant the problem is, the more likely it is to become solved. And finally, I would like to say to use your rights as citizens in a democratic country. Voting, protesting and even running for political office are, I believe, spur the greatest change, of course, and it's not easy granted the atrocities of the Nigerian government, but it's the only means we have for peacefully demanding change. Thank you for everybody that has protested, has retweeted, has joined in the fight to make Nigeria a better place. And I hope and I believe that your whatever you did will not be in vain. And I hope and believe that your children will thank you so much for the actions that we are all doing today. Thank you so much for listening and long live Nigeria. Peace.